two Stuart Sidious steam engines. This is part seven. Completing the reassembly of the green engine, cleaning the flywheel in the lathe, and test running the engine using compressed air. On the red Sirius steam engine that I have, the end of the steam chest doesn't have a plug in it, but this one had a firmly fitted steel plug. I removed this, but unfortunately oil runs out of the end of the steam chest. I don't think this piston valve seals quite as well as the other one. The time has come to remove the steam chest. This is a bit of a deja vu because I've only just fitted it. And I'm going to refit the steel blanking plug in the end of the steam chest. That should stop it leaking. In this clip at the left hand side you can clearly see the oil that's run out of the steam chest. I was pleased to see that there's plenty of oil in the top of the pistons. I fitted the blanking plug into the steam chest and now's a good time to wipe the oil off the top of the cylinder and just lubricate the pistons while I can see them. All ready for reassembly, if you look at the left hand side of the steam chest you can clearly see the edge of the blanking plug that I've refitted. Also in this clip you can see what looks like some slot headed screws in the steam chest. But these are not slot headed screws by the way, they are just marks in the casting. It would appear that when the wooden pattern was made it was held together with wood screws. And as the casting process duplicates the pattern that's why there are marks in the finished casting. I could have filled them before painting but I quite like the look of them anyway. I'm just tapping the driving pin into position and after that was done I looked in my box of split pins for a suitable size split pin to prevent the driving pin from working loose and falling out. This was a very simple job, the split pin was too long so I chopped it to the correct size then I removed it and cleaned up the end because I didn't want the end of the split pin to be sharp. Once I cleaned up the end I just touched it on the polishing spindle and now as you can see not only does it look better, it's not sharp and it will not cut my fingers. This is what the split pin looks like after I bent the ends right over. The next thing to look at is the flywheel. It's not running concentrically on the crankshaft and the crankshaft is not bent. Whoever built this engine drilled down through the grub screw holes and into the crankshaft to locate the grub screws. This is never a good idea in my opinion. As the fitting that's bolted to the front of the flywheel runs perfectly concentric, I thought I would put that in the chuck and use a live centre in the hole at the other side of the flywheel to keep everything solid and rigid. Then at a medium speed I carefully turned down the outer diameter and as you can see I'm getting quite a good finish straight from the lathe tool. When machining cast iron in the home workshop it's not a good idea to run it too fast. This was a little bit on the fast side and the finish wasn't brilliant, but after an application of a piece of wet or dry sandpaper it started to look a whole lot better. Time for a health and safety warning. I've fed the wet or dry sandpaper underneath the work and I'm pulling on it so if it tears my hands will come away from the chuck not towards it. Common sense but often common sense is not that common. I refitted the flywheel to the engine, connected the compressed air supply and the engine seems to run quite well. It's not leaking oil from the part at the top but the squeaking noise is back at certain speeds. I think I'm going to have to live with this. The red World War II series doesn't leak oil at all and it doesn't have a plug in the end of the steam chest. I don't like the exhaust outlet pointing at me. Look at all the oil vapour coming out when it's running. I am definitely not going to fit this very badly made exhaust pipe. I need to make a proper exhaust manifold but temporarily I'll look in my box of bits. And in my box of bits I found quite a large elbow. And I made this. And before anyone comments, yes I am aware that it's a terrible thing. It looks awful, but at least it deflects the oil mist away from me. It was very simple and easy to make, I just machined one of the ends of the elbow so it fitted inside the large nut and with the help of a silicone o-ring it seals perfectly. I'll make a much better one in the next episode. That's it for the narration on this video, I'll leave the engine running until the end. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.
please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.